your source for everything paranormal. Para X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guest do not necessarily reflect those of Para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. The Gathering. The supernatural world can be a dark, intimidating, and scary place. We gather to shine light on the mysterious and misunderstood aspects of the paranormal world. We bring to the table years of experience as mediums, healing channels, and paranormal investigators. We share true stories from our experiences to dispel fear where we can and help you discover the amazing layers that make up the paranormal world. You are invited to gather around the metaphysical table with us and discuss the worlds of the unseen on The Gathering Radio Show. Here on The (laughs) Gathering Radio Show, and this is Heidi. And this is Stephanie. I love it. Yeah. Tune in Tuesday tonight. I almost said what we said last week because we were just trippy. talking about it. I know. But last week was a trippy Tuesday. It was. It's not trippy today. Thankfully. No. Today's a tune-in kind of day. <laughs> it's tune-in Tuesday. There you go. I so how are you, Heidi? I'm excellent. Good. Very good. It's been a fantastic weekend because we have a new addition to the household. So very exciting. We have a new pup here. Cool. And she's fantastic. Awesome. Already. Already. So now we have two. Now we have two. Yep. We picked her up a new we picked up our new dog on Saturday. And the rescue, she just it was taken off a bus on Saturday with like thirty five other dogs. And they do a quick few vetting things and then they schedule you to pick them up at a certain time. You go pick them up and they're like in your house within hours of getting here into Minnesota. So it's a pretty smooth process, but yeah, then there's that decompression time that yep. an animal needs. She's three years old, yep. and um, so I'm sure she's been hustled around a lot in the last oh, few yeah. weeks, and who knows what else, and who knows what she was doing before then. I think she might have been a puppy mill dog. Oh. Oh. Yeah, but thankfully, it didn't um, <sighs> sour her towards humans because she yeah. is so sweet and trusting. So, awesome. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I think she'll well, be that, a good fit. Yeah, cool beans, cool beans. Yeah, you can't do wrong with dog medicine or animal medicine. Nope. So. Nope. Yep, I totally agree. I totally agree. And um, I have to report on my owls. They are almost ready to leave that nest. I'll post some pictures tomorrow. Last night I was there for maybe half an hour, and all three of the babies were out you know, winger sizing and they were marching up and down and mama got so mad at one point she flew away because that was, she was done with that. And then they all looked at her like, mom, where are you going? It was the cutest thing ever. So I will post some of those tomorrow, but I haven't had a chance to look at them really, you know, so the owls cool. are doing good. The eagles are doing good. My kitty has hyperthyroidism. I found out today. So I'm not doing but good, she, but she'll be good. But at least, you know, good. Yeah, 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 that's treatable. She, she just lost a little too much weight, and I thought maybe I wasn't feeding her enough because, you know, you just never know. You know, she's hungry all the time, but she's always been that way. So it is what it is. But anyway. You know, speaking, I, of, speaking of owls, I just have to say we did a paranormal investigation on Saturday night um, at a park nearby. It was more of a a practice for people. You know, we haven't done anything in person for the paranormal group, my paranormal group for over a year, right? Because mm-hmm. of COVID. Mm-hmm. And I used to do outdoor investigations quite a bit because it's a yeah. great way for a lot of people to get together. It's a good place for people to practice who aren't very, um, you know, acquainted yeah. with it. You know, they, they're they not familiar with it or don't have any equipment. So you can get a good amount of people together. Yeah. And, um, and now because it's outdoors, it's even better because of COVID. So we can, you know, stay separate. Everybody had masks on anyway. And 
we were able to do our first outdoor investigation in over a year and it was great. And, but there was an owl there in the park and it was lit up by the sunset because we got there before it got dark so that we could get mm-hmm. our bearings and I could do a little like mini one oh one, you know, for people who had never done any paranormal investigating. I think we had like, I don't know, 16 or 17 people show up. There was more, but a few, you know, people at the end couldn't come or whatever. And that's fine. But there was this owl sitting way up in a tree, but it was still, it must have been huge because for how high up it was, you could still see every detail. Mm -hmm. And the sunset lit this owl Mm -hmm. up and it looked like a painting. It was magical. And it would watch as we're walking along this path to get to, you know, just kind of spread out. But as you're walking along this path, the owl would follow you with its head yeah. and turn yeah. and watch you the entire time. And it was, and then someone else would walk by and you could see the owl turn and watch that person walk by. Yeah. And then the next person walk by and it, it was just, it was magic. And so we yeah. definitely had an owl medicine with us on Saturday night, which was yeah. super, super awesome. Yeah. I love my owls as you know. <laughs> but- so Sherry in the chat room, I'm going to answer this question before we get going because it's related to what I just talked about is ghost are ghost hunting groups. Uh, oh, I'm not under. I think it's there's a mistype. Numerically on the decline. Yeah, I, numerically I think, on the cl- oh the groups themselves. I think that maybe a lot of interest is gone from. Yeah, I don't know hunting. because then now the shows are kicking back up again. Right? I mean, there was a there was know. a couple year period where the ghost hunting shows there wasn't any new stuff out, and mm-hmm. you know the the ones that were out weren't really putting anything <laughs> new on the air, and I don't know. I think some things went to YouTube or other yeah. channels too. So yeah, but now it, I think it's picking back up again. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, because I think there's a lot of interest again with some of the new yeah. shows. It's getting people, uh, you know, it's lighting the fire again. So I yeah. don't know. I think it's I think it's coming back up, especially yeah. after COVID. Yeah, I think well, COVID you we've talked everyone's about looking before. for something to do, you know, well, that and I think COVID really scared the the weasel out of people because it was people were calling me left and right with the whole um someone's in my house but there's no one here because now people are home all the time yeah and yeah so i think people are they're freaking out because they realize they've got stuff in their house that they never knew because they were always running around they never were home and And now they're home and they hear them yeah so i think it has renewed some interest here in the um in the paranormal yeah yeah all, it's all good. Fake. All yeah. good. So tonight we have um, a really fun couple of guests. We have what I, who I call the Cryptovania boys, on with us tonight. So we have Jason Trost and Tommy Cooper. Hi, guys. Howdy. Hello. How are you? Welcome to the gathering. Welcome to the table. Awesome. Thank it's, you. Thank you. We're doing great. My pleasure. <laughs> so what's new since you were last on and actually you guys it's been, been a, while. a while it's been about yeah. a year and a half maybe i'm thinking it was the sum maybe almost two years it was in the summer almost for sure two almost two years yeah yeah well that's been a, it's been a, a heck of a two years <laughs> um <laughs> you guys have a lot to talk about so we better hear all about it yes absolutely <laughs> What are we starting with? What do you guys want to talk about first? Because you had a whole list of stuff before the show, and yep. we were like, oh, my gosh, that's interesting. So many interesting things. What do you want to start with? One of the things um, that we, we did. Start with... Go ahead, Tommy. <laughs> One of the things that uh, we want to talk about is uh, we're uh, filming a, a, a first-person encounter. Uh, an eyewitness saw a Bigfoot uh, real recent to hear uh right over in the uh, game lands over by the this right over by townville and uh or uh and uh they had a, a good uh report on that and uh jason they said uh what did they say again well the way what we did is we filmed uh, an episode of what we call zero squatch 30 and that's our first person encounters and he describes um he was on i had a, a road cr- uh, crossing, or actually had a bunch of deer cross the road, and when he looked over to what was chasing those deer or startling them, he got a real good, like, 14 to 20 second long look at a a very tall, big, massive Bigfoot uh, crossing uh, crossing the field, and he had a, a really good look at it, 
and uh, he was really shook up. Um, and uh, his uh, his story is very uh, very compelling. Wow. wow, fourteen seconds. I mean, even if it was only fourteen, you said fourteen to twenty, but fourteen seconds—that's a long time to get a good look it's at something. So you're going to be pretty certain you know what you're seeing with fourteen seconds. Yeah, yeah. There's there's no there's no guessing. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the things that's really cool about the story is the the creature walked behind a a a a, a, pole, a power pole. And so that later on, that gives a perspective of how big and massive it was. Mm -hmm. Um, And he said it it really wasn't in a hurry. It was wasn't standing still, but it really wasn't in a hurry. And he just it 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 shook him up and he called it a a basically a a life changing event. Wow. And what time of day was it? Uh, that was like around uh, like three, three or four, you know, like mid, oh, mid, uh, mid oh. afternoon. Um, so and, um, and he describes the uh, the the effect of the light on the uh, on the, uh, the the creature's fur. Um, and did we lose Jason? I don't know. We did. We oh. lost him. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Oh, he's back. Okay. He he talks about the uh, the uh, the halligan shine on the fur and stuff like that. Uh, he, he was uh, quite an interesting guest as far as he was somebody that I've known all my life and everything. And uh, really a, a good encounter. And uh, I think we're going to make a good show out of it. Awesome. awesome. That is – and was it – has it been recently? It's been like in the last – you know, recent times, right? It was in all yeah. this. Yeah, it happened over the last few months. Okay. That's cool. And, you know, haven't yeah. you heard, I mean, from eyewitnesses that I've talked to, too, whenever they see a Bigfoot, it's a life-changing event, right? They never really believed about Bigfoot before, but once they see him, it's like it alters their life. Yeah, 100%. And, and you know, and, and he says that he still goes out but he thinks about it. You know, he's very mm-hmm. conscious of what he's doing and he's very conscious now of, of uh, letting people know exactly where he's at. And that's kind of uh, out of character for him. He's kind of, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of time in the woods that with this guy. And, uh, and he said, you know, now he's very conscious of making sure somebody knows where he's at. Yeah. Well, that's a good I, idea. that's a good practice anyway, I think. You know. Yeah. Um, and but you said it was it was kind of dark, like blackish color, right? Um, no, actually, he called it like a that. reddish brown. Oh, oh. Yeah. I yeah. thought I heard you say black. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. But he said the. Uh, but he's is like a. And he said that what was odd about it is he he said you would expect to see like whiffs of hair, but there was like something about the 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 edges that. There was no like whiffs, like more like a dense fur, and mm. uh, but there was also like a shimmering effect to it. Well, mm. you know, you guys know, and I can't think of his name right now off the top of my head, but there's a researcher in your area that talks about Bigfoot hair, right, and that it has that kind of shimmery. John Lackey. Yep. John yes. Lackey. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. And it has that oh. shimmery effect. And and that's uh, the same effect that uh, polar bear hair has. Polar bears actually have black skin, but you but you don't see it. You don't see it because of the uh, the refraction of the light through their mm-hmm. their guard hairs. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's been demonstrated in in you know in nature the effects of you know light being refracted by certain guard hairs. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I believe because I've seen some of those, uh, some of the shows talking about that where it helps with camouflage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Because and, and, it, it, and, and so it, it was really cool in this. You know, he had that long, you know, long good look at it, and he said at the same time, like it had like muted edges, and it really falls. It it really, you know, hammers home that that Heiligenschein point. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Mm-hmm. 
That is very cool. So, and it's close to you. So, Tommy, I know you're going to be up in those woods a lot now looking for this. I was there tonight. I was yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> and he's already there. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, yeah, I know it. Well, that is awesome. And, you know, so for people who don't know about Cryptovania, so it really is cryptid country where these guys are, which is in western Pennsylvania, kind of northwestern Pennsylvania, correct? Um, yes, yes. And you're in the midst of a whole lot of wooded lands, and it, it goes up to the Appalachians, right? I mean, it's pretty close to there, right? It's kind of all comes through that swath. Yes, yeah, yeah we are definitely Allegheny Mountains, or the uh, the Allegheny Watershed. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and and there's a a lot of really wild country here, and a lot of um, a lot of layers of intrigue. Um, you know, you've got your your Bigfoot encounters, you've got um, you've got Kinzu and its strange, strange happenings up there. They even have their own water beast up there. Um, and uh, we've got we got quite a, a menagerie of uh, interesting things to to poke around at here. So, for people who don't know, what is a Kinzu? Can you describe that? Uh, kinzu is the uh, is the uh, the dam that creates uh, Allegheny Reservoir. And oh, there's some very wild country there, and there's a lot of intrigue and mystery that comes from there, um, from a lot of different directions. Um, you have some uh, some native bitterness over um, a village being uprooted because of uh, the flooding of the dam, um, and that brings its own dark energy. And when they were making the dam, um, there's tales of them exposing giant caverns with uh with giant chairs and there there being actually gun battles um you know that there's there's just all kinds of oddities that that really center around that that kinzu dam um and they even have their own uh water creature um the kinzu nessia um oh. and yeah it, it is it's it's something else up there <laughs> um yeah. matter of fact when the uh, when the Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts go up to go to the uh, the the yearly jamboree every year, they have a, a commemorative patch, and the patch from the Warren the the town of Warren's Scouts actually has the Kinzu Nessie is the uh, uh, it's always a variation of the Kinzu Nessie because of a a, a Boy Scout encounter with her. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Yeah, awesome. yeah. That's impressive. And the the stuff about giants has a, a particular uh, interest for for me and Tommy. Um, and just just three quarters of a mile from uh, from Tommy's house in Cryptovania HQ, HQ is a uh, is an old burial mound. Um, and there's a lot of those around here in Northwest Pennsylvania. Um, one of the audit one of the uh, Interesting things about uh, that that one is there's also a Civil War era graveyard on top of it. So you have a mixture of two different societies um, oh. graveyards there. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. And there's talk of a uh, Smithsonian being in there. And um, this area is very uh, distrustful of the Smithsonian folks. Um, <laughs> and there's talk of um them spiriting away uh evidence of giants yeah uh, and, well. and there's a lot of things around here that point to uh, evidence of giants being here at one point um and including uh you know the seneca tales of uh of there being giants here at one point um you know back probably around 1200 uh, ad would be about when they seem to have disappeared wow hmm. so what kind of evidence are you talking about well one of, of the really interesting things that's that is here in our very area is within between my house and tommy's house is the uh, the first oil well ever produced um it's drake's well this and it wasn't a very deep well um, and everybody in this area knew there was oil close underground because it seeps out into our, our cricks. Um, and one crick in particular, the one that's between me and Tommy, is called Oil Crick because it gets, it'll have a scum of 
naturally occurring oil on it sometimes, especially in the uh, in in places where it gets backwaters and stuff and and eddies. You'll get a collection of like a it's it's kind of an iridescent, you know, kind of when you see oil on water, it's mm-hmm. it's and then it's it's got like a rust color to it too. Um, mm-hmm. And there's here still remnants of oil collecting pits where somebody about a thousand years ago did, dug up, made these pits that, that are in any of the back channels of the creeks around here. And they were lined with half timbers and they would be about four foot by six foot. Um, and it's basically acknowledged that these were oil collection pits. Um, and at one point around the, the turn of between the 19th and 20th centuries, there was still documented that there was about 2,000 of those pits in one general area around here, which wow. is a heck of an endeavor. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I would and say it. In the past, it's always been – it's been kind of like said as an aside that the uh, that the Seneca did that, that made those pits and the uh, – it said that they did it for oil for their hair. Um, where they came up with this story, nobody really knows because it's it's not a Seneca story. They don't tell stories of ever using them, and and they don't really know what the the what the source of those pits were. Um, and one of the things about petroleum soaked wood is it makes it near impossible to date because it slows the aging mm. process. Oh. And there's still remnants of these oil-lined pits here, um, and we uh, we wonder who did that. And yeah, I was just gonna say that maybe giants did. Mm-hmm. And like Kat in the or Karen in the chat room is saying, what what would that have been used for then? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, what else could it have been used for? Well, that that's we, the question. There have been um, over in Ohio in some of the uh, the mounds that they have there. They have found very ancient lamps that don't really fit any historical narrative, and so it kind of lends itself to the possibility that maybe for oil for lamps, um, mm. for some kind of lighting type of thing. Um, you, you've got to wonder. That's a heck of an endeavor to dig. Even if those 2,000 pits that were there were the only ones, that's a heck of an endeavor just for collecting some oil for your hair. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, that I would doesn't think sound likely. Yeah. Holy cow, I can't even imagine. You know, and, and it's never really been explored very much because um, it was just kind of like, oh, well, you know. And you wonder who exactly wrote that history, you know, and when a lot of this the stuff for this the Seneca was was documented, it was documented by people that didn't understand them, mm-hmm. you know. And so you, it, it just kind of seems to be like one of those little loopholes in the history, um, and it doesn't make sense at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that would just be a lot of oil. I mean, period. Well, yeah, two thousand. I mean, even for light. Or, you know, I can see like it burns like they have on the end of the logs, you know, you use it as a torch or something. But still, that's a lot of oil. 2,000 pits. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, when you when you look at these these old historical reports, you know, they, they kind of corroborate each other. And then you still find these these pits around. Um, and and like I said, trying to date them is near impossible because they're petroleum soaked. Wow. That's that's kind of. Mind-boggling, actually, isn't it? I mean, you know, uh, one of the uh, one of our customers that comes in here, um, I got him to confide in me that uh, as a young man, he was uh, digging a, a trail that ran through Drake Well, which is Old Creek State Park, and they found a room that was a, a cavernous room, and they looked, and there was some sort of treasure of some sort in the room. And they told the boss about it, and the, the next day they had to sign NDAs and all this kind of stuff, and they rerouted the trail around, and they cemented the uh, the uh, entrance to it and all this and that. That is going to mm-hmm. be that's going to be a story that I'm going to enjoy breaking uh, to Cryptovania mm-hmm. because uh, I I can't wait to tell this story. Yeah, and, uh, that's cool. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. What kind of treasure did he say? What kind of treasure? What was it? There was a box. He said there was a box in there, and it was like it was like a twelve foot cavern. And yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, this was like you know forty years ago. Mm-hmm. So he was, uh, you know, he, it, it's just so long ago that nobody can get to it yet. But uh, I, I'm oh. gonna. Yeah, it's it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. <laughs> That's awesome. You kind of like have your own Oak Island right there in Cryptovania. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and not Love too it. far from here um is an old newspaper report from of uh some kind of excavation when they were digging for oil and they came across um an iron helmet that was just huge and bones and a a, a giant like 9 foot sword. Um, and, and then it it says in this 150 year old story in the newspaper that the Smithsonian came and let everybody look at it and then took it. They had some kind of display in Tyanesta for like a weekend or something and then took it with them. And, you know, and it's, and it's a newspaper story from 150 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Nine, nine foot sword. Nine foot sword. Yeah. 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 That's so you're looking crazy. at what, 14, 15 foot tall people? Well, yeah. at least. At least. Mm-hmm. And, and then even wild. being, and then even being metal and, and a sword and an iron helmet, it, it doesn't fit timelines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So wow. that's one of the things that we'll be concentrating <laughs> on this summer. And we've got a couple people that are going to join us th- throughout the summer. Um, and, and we'll make episodes of of us going and, and investigating these, and 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 maybe not presenting answers, but presenting more questions. Mm-hmm. You wow. know, like what has been destroyed? You know, what has been des- destroyed over the course of time? That's mm-hmm. the the interesting thing. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Well, lots. I mean, you know, and if there's you know, I mean, we hear about cover-ups about Bigfoot all the time, so why not cover up this stuff, too, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, unfortunately, they they want to cover up the giants because that doesn't bode well for the... Uh, it, it has a lot of political ramifications. Yes, 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 it, absolutely. And, and, an, an interesting aside that we've come across with these these discussions is is we have a friend that's a, that's a Seneca that um, documents a lot of these mounds and burial sites, claiming some of them for for Seneca and and so that they could protect them. Um, and you'll find some farm fields here will have like an area that they they have to leave alone that's protected that that are protected grave sites. And one of the interesting things that that he's told us is that he's come across like two foot tall skeletons that are fully developed and they claim them as, as, as Seneca. They, I can't remember their name for him, but it basically it's a, it's translates to to little people. Um, And they claim them as their own. And there's some of these sites have actually been like two foot skeletons. And he says, they're not babies. Um, they're not children. They are fully grown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's kind of one of the asides from from us talking, you know, talking to people about these these mounds here, um, which are very, you know, very interesting in themselves. And then as you as you dig into these, you come across all kinds of interesting side stories that that you know kind of distract you at times from what you were looking at before. But there's so many. So many very cool avenues to to go down. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely! And the thing is, wow. there's giant there's giants all over. I mean, we have a big a big mound in northern Minnesota called um, the Grand Mound, which they say is giants. You know, the giants lived there back in the day. Yeah. And, and and you 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 wonder about all of the the interrelations uh, of of all that, and uh, mm-hmm. it is it's it's. it's kind of one of one of our favorites and it's one that it really hasn't had a lot of there hasn't been a lot of good stuff on it yet yeah well 
it's not really out there. So you guys are just paving the way. See, totally yeah. new yeah. stuff. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, you know what? It's a minute before the halftime, but I think we should go to break now so that then when we come back, we can, you know, talk some more. So this is the Gathering Radio Show on the Para-X Radio Network. We will be back in two minutes. Are you haunted by shadow people in the middle of the night? Do you secretly love all things creepy and spooky, enjoying ghost stories and horror fiction from the best storytellers? Do you have a true ghost experience you want to share, but no one will believe you? If yes, listen to the professionals on What Are You Afraid of? Horror Paranormal Show, Friday nights at 9 p.m. on Para-X Radio and at www.whatareyouafraidofpodcast.com. What, what are, are you afraid, afraid of on Terra X? X? Our creepy and demented hosts are on call to provide you with all your spooky needs with true ghost stories, interviews, indie music, and new horror fiction. We, we are, are ready, ready to, to scare, scare you. Terra X. <laughs> For a truly unique podcast experience, we have you covered. Spirit by You with C.J. Dunham airs live from the Third Coast in Southeast Texas on Tuesday and Fridays at midnight Eastern Time, covering Creole folklore and folk magic to strange paranormal activity to new equipment for the field. C.J. Dunham is a Catholic swamp witch, a devotee to our Mother Mary in the Trinity, a true believer in our Lord. The Holy Ghost and Christ. Peace be with your spirit and the spirits by you. What happens to a ghost when their home is torn down? No one thinks of the disembodied when they've ripped down old buildings, dig up cemeteries, and build clean, unhauntable condos. Every year, hundreds of spirits are driven out of their own haunts by the careless living to exist alone with no one to scare. At Para-X Radio, our hosts feel the plight of these evicted disembodied, and we're reaching out to you to please open your heart to one of these lost souls, such as the ghost soldier of the General Wayne Inn or the abandoned spirit cat of Benjamin Rush. So please, please, let a little spooky into your life. Won't you open your house to a ghost without a home? Para-X. Welcome back to the Gathering Radio Show on the Para-X Radio Network. And we have Jason Trost and Tommy Cooper from Cryptovania TV with us tonight. We're super happy to have them back with us because it's been a couple of years. So welcome back, mm-hmm. guys. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I want to get to a couple questions for you guys because there have been a few questions that have gotten mm-hmm. lost in the chat room, and I don't want to forget them. And yeah. so they are kind of back of ways. We're going to have to scroll back to our memories of like 20 minutes ago. And we were talking <laughs> about Sasquatch, and we had, let's see here, um, Kat was asking, just wondering your opinion, if you guys think that Sasquatch develops an undercoat in winter. We were talking about the fur, and they were wondering, do you think Sasquatch develops an undercoat when it's winter time here? I don't. I don't know. I'm kind of torn myself as to whether they have to make adjustments to the physicality of of, of our environment. Um, because myself, I kind of think that they come in and out dimensionally. Myself. Mm-hmm. Um. And so you you wonder if they need it. Right. And then there's yeah. me. Then there's me. Oh, I yeah, here we go. <laughs> they go underground. Yeah. So oh. I think they're, they're, yeah, they're underground. Cool. All right. Um, but I do believe that they have some layers there. That, and and I'm, a, I'm a big believer that they have like a, that, that guard hairs um, and that that's one of the things that, that, lends themselves to, to, to both their uh, uh, camouflaging and, and, and um, yes, that's, that's where I go with that. I'm not sure yeah, if yeah. they, like, I don't know if they suffer from heat or not, because you would, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. Right. It's an interesting and, question. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah, the, uh, the shimmer, the shimmer person, you can see like in the, in the, I've been in the woods before and I've seen, the uh, shimmering man or the shimmering Bigfoot or whatever, I've seen them before. So mm-hmm. it, mm. That's what allows yeah. them to hide in plain sight, Tony, so they can be yes. right in front of us and we can't see them. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, is, is, is that just a, a light thing or is it a vibratory thing? Because I, I think Linda Godfrey has, has her, she's opined that maybe that they, they have like a, an, an electrical frequency to yeah. them, a vibration mm-hmm. um, or, you know, what we might call an aura or something that mm-hmm. I guess that might lend itself to that. Um, yeah. yeah, that that's, it, 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 it really, it kind of like when we were going earlier, you can go down so many places, you know? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Cause we don't know. That's the thing. We don't know. We right. have a lot of ideas and you know, we just don't no know. No one can Lots say for certain. Yep. Yeah, more questions than answers. Every time we go out in the woods, there's more questions than answers. Yeah. All right, so we have another question. Um, this goes back to the the vats, the oil vats, the pits. Okay. And Karin in the chat room is asking if the petroleum might be an after effect or something that was secondary. Could the pits have been for something else and then the petroleum happened later or mm-hmm. they needed it like could there be another option that the petroleum wasn't what they were doing or needing? That is a, that's certainly a, that's certainly a, a possibility. Um, and it could very well be that for, there was another purpose and then it also happened to create eddies for the collect that for that oil collected in. Um, that's, it's certainly a, a, a possibility. Um, and we could very well be looking at, just a uh, uh, an effect of something that some other other endeavor, um, and you you, you got to wonder what what were they doing when who was it? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. that's certainly a very real possibility that it just so happens that those pits also are collect oil, which then lent, makes it hard to date. Um, you know, very very possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. You know, when we talked about that sword, so Kat in the chat room posted a link to a story about a sword that was found in uh, Jap- Japan, um, 15th century Japanese sword that's huge. It's 3.77 meters, which is 12.37 feet in length and weighing as much as 32 pounds. Okay, who wielded that is what I want to know. And it's enormous. So there's a picture in here, too, and it is ridiculously enormous. Mm -hmm. What was that for? I don't know. It's um, I'll send you guys the link because I know you're not in the chat room, but it's it's they don't really know. It's a huge sword from Japan. Uh, Talks about how big it is. Um, Yeah, it says it's just from the 15th century A.D. And it's called a Norimitsu Norimitsu. Odachi sword. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Yeah. Um, but there's more information in the link. Yeah, you probably have to yeah. just check the link. But it's really impressive from the photo. Yeah. And you, I don't yeah. know, would it be ornamental, you know, that it wasn't Maybe. actually held? Or was it, you know, held by someone that could wield something that big? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. It's, it's, it's an interesting one. I look forward to taking a look at that. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Awesome. For sure. Okay, so Nephilim. Nephilim came in our conversation, too. So Nephilim, are you thinking that they're just the giants, or do they have something to do with, you know, what it talks about in the Bible, about them being fallen angels that just happened to be giants, right? They were kind of a mixture of things. Yeah, it, it's an, or, or you have heard that the descendants of Cain uh, mm-hmm. uh, destined to, to wander the earth uh, alone. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's really, I don't know. Honestly, um, you you kind of you think well, giants and nephilim are they are they one and the same, or mm-hmm. is it two totally com- totally different? You know, yeah, it, it's you know it's kind of like Dogman and Bigfoot. Yeah, um, you know, are they the same thing or different ramifications, um, or even our own um, our own perceptions? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe. You know, maybe f- for whatever reasons we have our our own uh, perceptions that we we put on things. Yeah, because maybe we just can't process, so we have these filters that our brain uses, so that we just don't see what's really there, or we our own changed it. Biases inside. Mm-hmm. Right. right. 
you know, and so, you know, maybe when we have encounters, we might feel ne- like a, we might feel negative towards it, but it could be just our own reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then that's one of the beautiful things of Bigfoot and paranormal and all that. You know, there's really no there's no Newton's law. No. And there's no experts and there's nothing because we just don't know. We can only report what we find and then we're done. You know? 100%. <laughs> Which we do all the time. And I always say, I don't know what this is. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My famous last words. I don't know what this is. <laughs> let's, let's check it out. Let's check it out. Yeah. Um, that's really what we try to celebrate with our, our whole cryptovania uh, experience, um, especially on, on the television channel. We really we, we like to be a celebration of all of this um, mm-hmm. and, and like, um, you know, having the, the, the various content producers, you know, having squatchers on there. Um, and, you know, it's it, it's it, we, we really enjoy celebrating Bigfoot and paranormal. Mm hmm. Well, because the, it's so interesting. And like I said, there's no, we don't know, right? We can only report on what we find and what we think could be, but we don't know. We don't know, you know, it's just. And a, we live in a, we live in a cool age where, where things mm-hmm. are, are accessible to us. You know, this, this, you know, all of us here on, on this, on this broadcast right now, we all, we all have our day jobs and we do our things and then we can do these uh, uh, these things that we do as an uh, as an aside mm-hmm. um, while they're very important to us it's it's really it's really cool that we have these resources at our fingertips mhm oh absolutely absolutely and it's it is, it's fun besides right i mean who doesn't love to go into the woods or go into a dark crazy scary place at night and do some investigating you know i'm just saying yeah. <laughs> we yeah, do it all venture out of a, a out of a 20 minute walk um, yeah. I have one place here that that I that me and my wife like to hit, and we it's just a twenty minute to a one hour walk. Um, but a lot of times I'll find interesting tree structures and tree bows and such, and it, it's you don't have to go very far, and you can mm-hmm. make an adventure out of it. And mm-hmm. and suddenly a, a five acre lot suddenly turns into a a, a giant playground. Yes, yes. Well, and Tommy, I mean, he just has to walk out his door, right? And the woods are right there within, you know. It's our main research area. It's right <laughs> off the road from my house, man. Nice. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's it's a lease and it's a thousand acres and we're all on it. And plus there's everybody else that has property around it and stuff. And they all know us. They, they all think we're cool. And yeah, we can do anything. <laughs> That's Isn't, handy. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. You guys are cool because, you know, you, just, you, you, you find all this stuff out and then they're like, maybe they've seen it before, but are too, you know, there's that whole thing about they don't want to say what they've seen because of the implications. People are going to think they're crazy. So they love it when we tell them or when you tell them, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's one of the, 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 the things I've had happen to me is a man come down here and he was explaining to me that he was like, uh, He's like, hey, what 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 goes on two legs and it crosses the road and it's about seven foot tall? And I was like, um, I don't know, man. I was like, was it a bear? He's like, I don't think so. I don't think so. And he described to me a dog that walked across the road on its hind legs. And I was like, huh, that's Dragon. pretty interesting. Right up the road, right up the road from Cryptovania. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's almost like they're just begging to be interviewed by you guys. Yes. yes. <laughs> by showing up there. Yes. <laughs> that well, area okay. where that, that happened, we've had a, a couple of people that, that have right in that very area have, have given us reports of, of a, of a upright dog man type thing. Um, our good buddy, Richie, who's not with us anymore. Um, he swore up and down. He had, had two, a couple encounters there. Um, and uh, it, it, it's, and it's, just three miles down the road from from uh, Cryptovania HQ. Wow. Yep. That's yep. crazy. Absolutely insane. You guys are like right in the midst of all of it, which is so it's cool. A, it's a crazy, crazy world. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My gosh. So speaking of giants, so Jerry in the chat room from the calling is talking about um, there is a spot up between Pelican Rapids, which is up north, and Twin Lakes, where it is said to be a possible graveyard of giants. And there was a guy who emailed Sim, I guess, asking them to help. I'm not really sure what oh, he wow. wanted them to help with. So he's t- he's hoping the team can get up there in, in the spring. Hmm. Wow. Well, that's interesting. I think yeah. maybe Steph wants to go and see this. You know, we'll have to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just invite myself along, you know. It, it was, um, what was the name of that? Was Did you say that was Pelican Falls? Pelican, Ra- Pelican uh, Rapids. 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 I think. Oh. Yeah. It's up by, it's close to, I think it's up by Detroit Lakes. It's in between Detroit Lakes and uh, Minoman, somewhere close to there. Nice. So, yeah, so cool stuff. And like I said, we have the big, the big uh, Grand Mound up on the border, which is, I've been there. It's amazing. It's huge. It's amazing. They say giants are buried there. You know, it's a very interesting story. And next time mm-hmm. I get up that way, I'm going to go to the museum and find out more. So, well, I, yeah. we have one more question oh, for, because of what we were just talking about with this area that you guys live in. Uh, Karin was saying it sounds like you live in a vortex or uh, some kind of maybe paranormal doorway or energy doorway. Do you guys think that that's true? Do you think that there's something like that in that area, which is why there's so many sightings? I don't. I just think it's we know so many people and so many people tell us their stuff. And I think that that's why, because we're so well versed. Mm-hmm. So, you, so what you're saying is, is you kind of think that it's all over the place, and we just have a pretty, we just kind of, we get to get a lot of the stories. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. and yes. I kind I of think. myself, I'm kind of on the other side, and I kind of wonder if there isn't some kind of something special about this area, and it does seem like there's, you know. Even with the with it being the, the the birthplace of the oil industry, um, and and you 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 kind of wonder if there isn't maybe something about this area that doesn't create a little bit of extra. Mm-hmm. You know the the only thing that I would uh, I I would guarantee on that is uh, so many people were killed by the creek sides during the oil boom days. That's where the bandits would, would hit. Mm-hmm. So maybe, maybe. Mm-hmm. You mean like dark energies and stuff? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Could be. Interesting. Could yeah. be. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for, thanks yeah. for your thoughts on that. Yeah. And to Karin for the question. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you. absolutely. Thank you. So, so tell us about what is on the horizon for Cryptovania TV. Well, what, what we are, we've got a, a couple of projects in the, in the mix. One that we just filmed uh, last week, we filmed um, our buddy R.A. Mihailov, who is, has, is a, uh, a longtime horror film legend. Uh, he sat down in TRT Studios with us um, and interviewed a, uh, a, a local man who is a uh, – a local police officer who is also uh, was a professional wrestler for many, many years and a professional bodybuilder. Um, and these two have been wanting to get together and shoot the bull. Um, RA has uh, a couple years on the wrestling circuit too. And uh, we got to film them basically getting together and uh, shooting the bull. And, mm-hmm. and uh, it ended up, we filmed for three hours and wow. they just, they 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 just kept rolling and 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 it was it was kind of the way we film with our equipment you you have to do it in about 12 minute sec- segments because of the, the the way that it works on our cameras and so you in order to keep a continuous flow normally we'll film for 12 minutes stop for a second and then film again um but these guys just kept flowing and kept flowing so we had to do a little bumping and uh, and figuring to to keep it rolling because we didn't want to woe them back. Um, and that'll be a, an episode of Five Pounds of Sugar, which is basically uh, where we get to sit down with people that are making their living in extraordinary ways. 
or have gotten to to do uh interesting fun things as 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 their uh uh mm-hmm. chosen profession cool Can I, and I, I'd like to say something about r r a two words full house he was in full house oh r a was house <laughs> there you go. yes yes awesome. well that's yeah. a cool bit of trivia right there yeah yeah, yeah it, he was he's a very large man and he uh in one of his more famous roles is he was a uh, leather face in one of the uh, texas chainsaw movies oh. yeah yeah, yeah. And it, spooky dooky <laughs> yeah, and he was one of the one of he was our first episode of Five Pounds of Sugar. Um, and he sat down in our studio and we got to interview him. Um, and now he's doing he's doing a little bit of interviewing with us uh, with other people. And uh, it, so it's kind of a it's kind of a a nice uh, transition. Mm-hmm. That sounds cool. That yeah. sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. and we're. We're very flattered. It, you know, it, it, it's really awesome. It, it, it's like being a baseball fan and, and having Reggie Jackson walk in and, and drink a beer with you. Um, oh, have, love it. Having R.A. come in, it's, you know, and sometimes, you know, you're like, hi, R.A. You know, it, it, and you're, all right, remember, we got to be friends. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got uh, some. We've got some stuff that we're doing with uh, Irish Bigfoot too, and we're bringing them into the uh, the Irish Bigfoot Research Organization. Um, we're mm-hmm. bringing them into the uh, into the Cryptovania uh, the stable, um, and we'll have their their feature film, uh, Walking with the Wild Man. Uh, we should have that up in the next couple weeks, and we'll be doing a a production with them. Um, awesome. And so we've been we we just keep continually uh, moving forward, and we're trying to add a little bit of music and movie stuff so that it's not just bigfoot and paranormal it's lots of other ways of adventuring and having fun mm-hmm. yeah i love it just no yeah. politics and no religion yes yep yeah and, and, you know, and like so uh, <laughs> everything fun <laughs> <laughs> you know like uh edward monge and mike familiar and all those people that there's a lot of exciting things happening at cryptomania Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It sounds like that it. would be a uh, Bigfoot quest and in, in the shadow of the uh, big red eye. Um, you know, those are two uh, content producers that we just brought in in the last couple of weeks. We have a, a selection of, of their stuff available in the, the peer generated archives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Check out Cryptovania TV, everyone. If you have Roku, check it out. It's amazing how much stuff is on there. It's, you know, mind blowing actually. And it's, Thank you. it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Thank you. So I, there's a question, and, and I know I've talked to you guys about this off air before, but Sherry in the chat room says, is asking, if you find a Bigfoot hotspot reported to the government, could they close the area to hunt down Bigfoot? Thoughts? They would. Mm-hmm. They, they definitely would. I've seen it happen before. Mm-hmm. 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 We We've seen um, not very far from us. We've had uh, we've had interesting helicopter activity and police activity that's very that yes. doesn't go along with the uh, with the, the the narratives that they they put out at the time. Um, and and we, we we wonder about that. Um, and um, you know we've we have seen that. Um, mm-hmm. And that that that's it's, it's definitely something that that we're conscious of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and and you know, just right here in Minnesota. I mean, last fall. Well, I guess it probably was a year ago now. But one of the, my researcher friends up there was talking about how his niece was driving on one of the roads in his research area, actually, and it's a highway. And there was someone coming from the other way, coming from the north, and they ran into what appeared to be a Bigfoot and crashed their windshield. The Bigfoot got up and ran away. They reported it to the highway patrol who came and closed, you know, put yellow tape all around the area. And, of course, we're out there searching for Bigfoot. And they told these people, do not tell anyone what you have seen here tonight. So, you know, that's exactly what they're doing. (laughs) You know? And what's cool is this researcher friend of mine actually went out there 
and found the windshield in the ditch and it's in his barn. So he's going to do some analysis on it, you know, and see what he can find. But isn't that cool? That is yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Funny they didn't think to take that. I mean, really, don't you think that'd be the first thing they would take? Yeah. You would think, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So anyway, yeah. So, okay. So we have about six minutes left. So anything that you guys want to talk about? That maybe we haven't covered already. Um, I, I, yeah, I wanted to, to ask you about those, uh, those, those rings that you have, <laughs> and that we've been Our... doing episodes on. For he said, she said, are you planning on going up there anytime again soon? Well, I was just up there on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we did, we did the, we did the show, but. Isn't that weird, Jason? And you know what? They find them in other places, too. I mean, we've, Carrie and I have found them in another regional park, actually on the Mississippi River. That's probably 10 miles from here, I think. We found one and some other researchers, because I'm always asking them about them now. You know, if I'm talking to one, I'll say, have you ever found those rings? Or they'll say something like, oh, we saw those pictures. That's awesome. And then I will say, well, have you found them? And they actually have you know what are they i mean they're 20 to 25 feet up in the air you guys i mean i'm not sure how they how humans what are they going to do take a ladder out in the woods to put those up there i mean no mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know it, what it, it, jay fouch over in uh Kishocton county uh he's found those rings too and he was like 12 or 15 foot off the ground mm-hmm wow mm-hmm. I mean, but there's 20 of them. So we counted. We went around and counted one day. All th- there were three of us squatchers up there. And there were 20. We counted 20. And it's not a very big area. And it's in a very, it's in a regional park close to me. I think it's probably about 10 miles from downtown Minneapolis. So very heavily populated area. But we're finding all these weird things. And so we we started thinking that we're going to start searching the regional parks and, you know, the the wildlife areas within the bubble of the cities, because obviously there's something going on, right? Or the suburban areas, I should say, you the know, Squatch project. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And they're all on waterways. That's the other thing, right? We know they follow the waterways. So, and I believe that waterway that comes into that park also goes all the way North to our research area. So, how about that? You know, mm-hmm. easy for mm-hmm. them to get there. It it, it, it kind of lends itself to, to my theory that like with the stick structure, that it's, it's ornamental, that it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's some kind of artwork or ex- expression to me. Mm-hmm. That's the feeling that I get from it. Yeah, me too. And there's a researcher up in Canada who is actually finds them on stick structures. She's the, got a she's got a YouTube video out there of a couple of stick structures that she's found, and lo and behold, there's those rings. So, very interesting, wow. right? That's yeah. that's really cool. I know, I know. Yeah. Or what if, if mm-hmm. Bigfoot is connected with UFOs? What if it's a marker for a visual from above? Mm-hmm. And entirely possible that that you know maybe that's why they're 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 up there is. Not for viewing from the ground, but from viewing from above. You know, they're pretty hard to see, though, Jason, honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, some of them are pretty clear. You know, I sent you a bunch of pictures today. But some of them are blend right in with the trees. You know what I mean? They kind of remind me of my great horned owls. They are hard to find. But they're there, nonetheless, you know. So, I don't know. To be determined, right? We'll keep watch. We'll keep going up there every now and then. And, you know, it's a park where Melly and I walk all the time. So I'm up there frequently, maybe not in that particular part of the park, but, you know, we'll show grow now more often. So Mm -hmm. anyhow, but yeah, fun stuff. So yeah, Yeah. so that'll be, we, we just filmed that. But well, guys. You know what? The music is playing. It's time for us to go. Thank you for being on The Gathering yes, again. absolutely. Great show. You'll awesome. have to Thanks come on again. Me. Thank you. Yes. And Heidi, another great show. Everyone, thanks Wrapping for listening. Up. The troops, yeah. if you're out there listening to us, hey, be safe and thank you for your service. 
Absolutely. And everybody in the chat room, thanks for your questions. And everybody listening, wherever you are, we so appreciate you being here. Para-X, thank you so much for hosting us. We love it here. And Sarge, our most amazing producer, thank you once again for everything you do. And we are looking forward to seeing you all back here next week. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Night. Night, everybody. Thank you.